Oh, I, uh, ah, so, yeah, and the boys are the boys are boys. They always are. Mm -hmm. Puppy dogs. Anybody needs those? But I've got. I've got, got oh, okay. Uh, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you've got a college one, too. Uh, I did. I now have a, a home one. Okay. He went to, what, did he Clark? Came back to the semester and uh, decided neither one of those will work. So that's great. I'm glad you figured that out. It's still a year and a half. Respect Monday night. Yeah. I don't mean to do it in, like alphabetical. Wake up in the morning and look at yeah. email. Yeah. And she's so okay. She's mad. Okay. Right. You guys were asleep? Right. So I was like way ahead of you. I was like day ahead all the time. <laughs> Quite frankly, I don't need permission to do anything. Well, good evening, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for being here. The red light's on, so I guess that's our cue that we can get started. Um, we had a couple of things we thought about talking about tonight. I'll kind of throw it out here. One is what's in front of us because, just a reminder, we developed norms a long time ago. I think Sean had asked whether they still apply, so I just, they're here if you want to take a look at them, but it's the same ones we've been working with for a while. Um, and then two, the, the two, this really was kind of a dual purpose meeting. The first is this is a normally scheduled process by which you come and we talk about the budget or you share with us anything you want about the budget. So that's on the agenda, and then the second thing on the agenda then is to talk about goals and where we are. There's been a lot of moving things since the last time we got together, so I'm not sure which order, so I guess I'll defer to the group. Do you want to review the, go through our normal review process of the budget first, and then talk about where we go from here? What's what, or talk about that first, what, what's sort of the preference of the group? Anybody have it? I know Kate's prepared a, uh, a little kind of cheat sheet, that, a one pager that might be helpful. It kind of shows where they started, some yep. of the items that they they know have changed, and I think she's briefed the uh, school board last week about this. That might be a decent place to start, and then sure. 
Um, so as a jumping off point, I can hand these around as, as, a, yeah. as a chat. Good. Stay there so we can pass things. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, there's a gap. What are we going to do? So the, the first sheet that I'm passing around is our one pager from the budget presentation back on April 4th. And um, that was pretty well received, it seems like. Um, Clarissa brought us back compliments about that from the budget outreach. And the, the goal of that was just to grab a few data points out of the school budget and uh, share them in a one in one easy to find place. Um, what does the budget do? What doesn't it do? And what are some of the um, bottom line points that we want people to be aware of. And uh, so I hand that out as a reminder of what uh, the two governing bodies passed at first reading. So the town council uh, passed first reading and then the school board passed first reading on the same school budget. So um, on the page with just the sort of gold and red, um, that's what you folks voted on. On the second page that I've handed out, at the top of that sheet is, again, the budget that was passed at first reading for the school department. And um, we talk a lot about items in motion or um, guesstimates that happen at first reading that we know are going to, um, we're going to have better information as we go through the budget development process and we're going to land probably somewhere other than where we started by the time we get to second reading. So the changes since first reading, this is what I shared with the school board last week. Um, I made it very clear <coughs> to them, and I'll make it clear to you as well, that this doesn't mean that we've taken any action on the budget. The first reading is still out there. The amendments to the first reading are made by the governing bodies. They're not, uh, they're not my job, thank goodness. Uh, but what I'm offering here is a description of what's changed in our estimates and what we know better now than we did before when we brought, uh, brought out the first reading. And then if those changes were to be applied to the existing budget proposal, what that would look like. So there are three chunks on this sheet. Um, I do have extras, I think. Yeah. Can we get them out into the audience? Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <coughs> <laughs> and we'll post this up on the portal as well. I think we've done yep. a pretty good job of getting things up there. there Thank you. Um, so not that you folks can't read, but for the benefit of those who might be listening at home, um, the changes since first reading that we're documenting here are, um, and, and for the most part, they have to do with insurance. As you know, we have, uh, we have estimates in the first reading for Anthem premiums, health insurance for all of our staff, Delta Dental premiums, and workers' compensation premiums. Uh, good news on work comp, we were able to actually reduce our projections based on the feedback from MEMIC and our, um, our insurance agents. Uh, so we brought that down, that um, estimate of cost down by about $34,000. Then the bad news <coughs> is that Anthem premiums came in at an increase of 7.2%. We had budgeted at an increase of 5%. So that adds $110,000 to our expected cost for health insurance premiums. Same thing pretty much happened with Delta Dental. We estimated at a 1% increase and we got a 3.2% increase. Obviously, dental insurance is a much smaller <coughs> cost. Uh, overall, but that does add $3,800 to our original estimate. Um, so in talking about insurance premiums, we have a lot of conversation back and forth about what's the best guess, you know, where, where do we go? We're trying to be conservative. Um, the other night at school board, we were talking about well, where, where did we get that 5% number? It was an average of the past five years. But when you look at the individual changes over those five years, we had up by eight and up by one, and then up by eight, and then up by two. So the volatility is very difficult. Um, and so this year, we didn't get the average, we got above the average. Um, the last two items on here above the green line, uh, one of them has to do with an error that was discovered by one of our citizens, which was really great, and then mm -hmm. Julie and I were looking at it together, and I, I found an error in my benefit calculations formula, where it actually picked up 
a column that it wasn't supposed to pick up mm -hmm. in five line items. Um, and so that was a reduction that I was very happy to take. I, I uh, didn't get a chance to go back through and figure out the anthem mm -hmm. changes before we found that, but we, we booked that right away. And that's a reduction of $32,800 without doing anything. It's a correction. Uh, the last item on here is a retirement projection change, and you know that, I think you know, that teachers um, notify us during the course of the year and during, uh, before January 1st of their intent to retire. Um, some teachers who have been here over a period of time through collective bargaining, they've been given a retirement payout of some of their sick time. And so when we know someone fits that category and they've advised us that they're going to retire, then we'll book that as a... Uh, as an expenditure that's expected in the coming year. So during the course of time between January 1st and now, we have people who have changed their plans. And so we have taken reductions in that stipend proposed uh, amount. And then we've also made adjustments in any kind of breakage that we were expecting from those positions. So the net change in that is a reduction of $5,600. Um, so the bottom line for the general fund is an increase of 41473 and then you'll see there's two small adjustments as well for adult ed and school nutrition because, again, those folks are also impacted by benefit changes. Benefit <coughs> changes. Immediate questions? Big dancing in the streets? <laughs> I, I would much rather see it go the other way, but uh, this is what we're looking at today. So anybody <coughs> questions, comments, anything? Not with regard to this. So. so we absorb this and we discuss other questions. So I have a question. So um, at the presentation by the superintendent and the manager when they give the overview, <coughs> it was discussed that any additional reductions um, in the school budget would require reductions in actual programs that would have um, immediate effect on the programs. and on the resources that we provide to the students. Have you done any projections on incremental, uh, the incremental impact? Because I think that someone mentioned that in order for us to hit the 3%, there's like a 700,000? 750. 750. Yep. So have you had a chance to look at if it was, and I'm not saying it should be, but if it was the school's budget that took that impact, have you looked at what that would do to your budget and, the, and your resource plan? And what And what is that? What is the impact? We haven't really uh, talked about $750,000 because that's about 15 positions. So that would be a pretty devastating conversation to have Ten positions. in a big way publicly. <clears throat> Excuse me, 10 positions. We were talking about $1 million, one million, weren't we? One. Yeah. Um, what we have done is we've talked with our leadership team about what potential cuts might look like. Obviously, you know, with regard to this, if, if you need to now save spend $50,000 somewhere else, you need to save it in another place. So we've had a series of conversations with our leadership team, um, one just this morning, another one scheduled for next week, um, where we're talking about priorities and we're talking about are there other places where we can go. Um, sadly, to your point about the presentation, we've already done the scrubbing of the non-personnel accounts. So really the only place that we have left to go is people and possibly professional development funds. So that's where we're looking at the um, additionally, really what we just need is direction because right now we're just sort of in limbo. We feel like we've done the heavy lifting um, on the front end for the first reading. We did that intentionally because we knew this was going to be a tough budget year. As you can see, there's no nice to haves in this budget. Um, and so the other thing that we can look at is um, programming, but we really feel that we've scrutinized each line item so much so that there's... It, all it really does is make our job harder to do every day if we go any tighter on those on those individual lines. So even in talking with the director of athletics, I've asked him to begin to prepare. This is something that he does regularly, but you know, what are all the programs we offer? How many students are impacted by each program, and what does it cost to run each program? Um, and so, if not professional development or personnel, then it's program elimination. And we just don't feel that it's responsible for us to continue to nickel and dime everything that we do across the board um, to just make our jobs 
you know, that much harder at this point or, and or having to rely on booster funds more than we already do um, or having to rely on parent contributions more than we already do for our day-to-day -day operations that it really would come down to that. So, so can I ask a clarifying question? Whom are you waiting for direction from? The council, the school board, or all of the above? The council. Um, and then we'll prepare our recommendations for the school board. So through the finance chair, this is a budget that the school board is comfortable with and is not going to move anywhere on unless we direct it? No, we haven't really made that decision. Yes, we, we, have haven't, to, we haven't had that discussion. Our meeting is tomorrow night. I mean, yeah. I, I think part of our, where I thought we were in some of the, the prior joint finance committee meetings mm -hmm. that we did have was all of us at the town council had had two goals we really, you know, would like to achieve. One was we want to pass the budget on the first pass so we don't go into August and September like we did last year. And two, the commitment we all made at that point in time, and it would be no more than 3%. And so we're not at 3%. And I think what we wanted to have is I think the community then needs to understand that in order to get to a budget that's at 3%, the net tax increase, what does that mean? And I think that's a really important, we can't have a community conversation until we can crystallize what are those trade-off decisions the community needs to make about where they want resources to go. And I, so are you asking um, all, I, I haven't been to the other department meetings, are you asking all of the other departments to also come in um, lower? How does, how does that work? Well, I, I think where we were and what we <coughs> asked is, you know, if our goal is still, and I, and I think, and that was part of the conversation I have tonight, I think, given where the community is, and I think we've heard the 3% the, the budget, if that's what we deliver in June, may pass. I don't think anything north of that is going to necessarily pass. I don't know if everybody agrees, but that's... Are you so talking the, tax rate? Yes. The, the, tax, the, the, the overall Increase tax rate. So that, I guess that's why I'm asking, does that fall on the school department to, to reduce to get to the 3%? Because so my feeling is, and, and maybe I'm off base, but the school department came in with expen expenditures less than 3%. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a revenue problem. Right. And so to ask us to continue to cut to get the town tax rate to 3% seems... So I'll give you my perspective after Not doing this for five years. Um, where instead of tap dancing around stuff, I'll be blunt. Uh, I, I guess what I'd like to see, if you're looking for direction, uh, I'd like to see a $750,000 reduction in the school budget, what that looks like. I'd like to see what two-thirds of that looks like. I'd like to see what half of that looks like. And I would say the same thing about the, 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 the municipal staff. I'd like to see what a third looks like. I'd like to see what a half looks like. Uh, because I, we haven't decided yet. We've, got, we've had some conversations and possibilities, but we haven't decided yet. We haven't decided yet what that splits. So I think we're fairly confident and uh, that a 3% based on public statements by councilors, uh, it, it's not going to pass for anything less than 3%. We've had people behind the table state that point blank. They're not going to support a budget for less than a 3% tax increase. I'll be very clear, tax increase. So there's a lot of moving parts still. Um, we don't have revenue, full revenue projections yet. That's still something that needs to be worked out. But based on the snapshot that we're at right now, with the revenue projections that we have, if they've got to come out of expenditures on both sides, what we happened? have to look at what a full reduction looks like on the school board. I'm not saying that, that I'm advocating for that direction, but we have to have an understanding of what that means. Uh, and then we did a two-thirds, one-third reduction last year on operating expenditures, what that looks like in terms of reduction of services for both sides. And then if we decide it's 50-50 or something along those lines, uh, I'm looking for that middle ground of if we, if we split it down the middle, what does it look like for, for municipal reduction in services and what it looks like for school reduction in services. So just from my point of view, I'm not on the finance committee, but um, I'm looking at we had a we had a increase of less than three percent now it's three point oh six percent with the in, with the um, with the adjustment <clears throat> and as far as I know and I was looking for the paper on the on the town side you guys have an increase of like six percent so 
I guess from my perspective, why aren't we talk why aren't you getting down to three percent before we start talking about who's so, adjusting what? I think you're talking apples and oranges, to be honest with you. Because you're talking expenditures and we're talking tax rate. And that's why it was very clear from the beginning of the conversation that we talked about the overall tax rate. Right, that's, a, that's, a combination, right. that's a combination of expenditures and revenue generation. So right, we have the to... tax rate is from the increases that we have plus the, plus the revenue. Our increases were 3%, yours were 5%. Your overall, plus impact, the your overall plus impact on the tax rate is 6% according to the corrections that Kate has made. Is that correct? It says right there, bottom line. The increase in our request for taxes. Correct. It's 6%. Okay. And our goal as a council was to have that overall increase in tax request overall for the entire town to be 3%. So if your 6% coupled with whatever the municipal side is, is greater than 3%, which, what, what is it? Do we have a calculation now based on the, re, the adjustments from the school? Of tax, the, tax rate? Yeah, overall tax rate. Yeah, if you add in 47,859, the uh, what do you mid range estimate based yeah, on evaluation. Yeah, yeah, this does yeah. not include any uh, calculation for uh, impact of the reval, mm -hmm. is at 4.19%. Okay. Excuse me, 4.27. 4.27. Well, 4.27. I understand what you're saying, but like, what would the impact be if we were at a 3% increase and you were at the 3% increase? If we were the same in that, what would the tax rate be then? Well, we are. If you go to this, and I, unfortunately, this doesn't have page numbers in it. I, oh. I don't know. It's under okay. tab two. Tab two. Okay. It's first the, page. It's the first page of tab two. If you actually look in that middle blue box, the net town increase, the net percentage change is 1.99%. So the town did come in under the 3%. But that's because your revenue is so much higher. I don't listen. No, no, listen. Listen. No, no. This is my first rodeo. No, no. It clearly. Just looks no. Super frustrating. Well, no. Let me let, let's be clear because we had this conversation at joint finance, right. saying our expectations, and everybody agreed to them. We were going to deliver a net three percent budget. Not that expenditures would be three percent. I don't bought, ever remember that no. being an well, agreement, Peter. Well. And for us, we would have never been able to agree that, to that, knowing that we had a $2.1 million fund balance gap to fill. There's no way we would have, for us to do that, to get to a net 3% on the school side, that would be that would be the 15 positions that Kate is talking about. That would dismantle our school department. And, and that's well, what I, we need to know. That's that what we need to hear. Our school because that, that has to be, I'm not saying that that's the action that's right. going to be taken by any stretch of the imagination, but that has to be clear. Mm -hmm. If we're going to set that target, and we're going to get to that target, and we're going to put it on the backs of the school department, that is the outcome that of that decision. Outcome. And that needs to be made very clear okay. yeah. to everybody in this room and everybody in this community. So that's why I'm asking for the, the different scenarios, because I, I personally don't think that should come on the backs of the school board. However, that question is going to be asked, yeah. and that, that action needs to be evaluated and looked at. So, so as we... The way we calculate the estimates that we use with salary and benefits for a teaching position is seventy-five thousand. So this is quick, easy math. Mm -hmm. For an ed tech, it's about forty-two to forty-five thousand for mm -hmm. salaries and benefits. Important to note that's not starting salaries; that's salaries and benefits. So, as we think about what was it, what will it take the school department if it's on us to bring us to that three percent tax rate this year during what we know is. Um, I forget the phrase that Tom's been using, but this is a correction year. Um, is that it would take ten, that would be ten positions, okay. right? Ten teaching positions, um, and then if we're going to do the two thirds, one third, you know, that could be like six teaching positions, one ed tech position could get us to that five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So still detrimental, right. like beginning to dismantle not just programs. This isn't. It, it's like literally. I mean, that's, and I'm not saying that to be dramatic. You know, I don't want to go down the emotional road. That's why we did the tough work up front before our first reading. Um, I think the other thing to think about, I know we've sort of abandoned our one town, one budget, but we are still a community, and we do have to look at the fact that the community is able to generate revenue and the school system is not. And the reason why we're in a place where we have to rely on taxpayers to fund our education budget almost 100%. I mean, keep in mind, we get about 5% of our budget from the state. 
the rest of it is on the burdens of all of us who live in this community, you know, myself included. Um, and we know that this, this year is, is the last year that we're in this position. And we're at minimum receiver and we stabilize, um, you know, in, in a perfect, you know, in a perfect world. As we saw our state subsidy declining over time in the last, you know, five to seven years, we would have been able to pace out and, get, and um, stretch out that fund balance and not had to use so much of it last year. But we didn't. We fell off a cliff last year well, when it came to wait, state no, subsidy. No, that's not. We have been sitting at this table, and, and I'll look to Sean, and we knew this cliff was coming. We knew that once the Wentworth funds were gone, we were going to have a cliff. I thought the conversation we had last year is, you know, and you referenced it several times, we are going to have a cliff this year. We had hoped that we took, we knew this cliff was coming. We were trying to, to plan for a soft landing so we could transition. That's why when we started this, but I, but I think where all of us are right now is, based on what we've heard, based on what we've committed to, to the community, they expect us, us collectively, to deliver a budget that has a 3% increase in the tax rate. Then we get, and what we had asked for, and it's much like, and it's what I had talked about the night on the first read, the way the town manager has prepared budgets is he delivers an overall tax increase that's under 3%. He's done the heavy lifting. He tells us what he can't do. And then we make a decision based on it, town council, about, okay, let's have those trade-off conversations. We'll make a decision about what's the right thing to do as it relates to the municipal budget. What we don't know, and I think what Chris has articulately asked for, is we need to see as a community what the decisions, what the trade-offs are, if they're only going to support a 3% tax increase, which is what we've committed to and what they've told us, they need to understand, the community needs to understand what those choices are. But so why are those choices only coming on the backs of there's, the there's 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 didn't there's say It's that. feeling very frustrating right now to hear this conversation. I have to be 100% honest with you. We understand that, that the town is, is fantastic and comes in at 3% every year. You have revenue. You can increase your revenue and then increase your expenditures. You get to invest in new things. We don't have that luxury of investing in new things. It doesn't happen. So, so I'll give you my, my take on it. Um, no one's asking you to cut $750,000 off the top. Okay, I, I, I disagree with, with Julie that we've abandoned the one town, one budget. Uh, we're it still sitting at this. Feels like it on this side of that. We're still that sitting at this table. There's same. other revenue that's in generation, that's in that's in motion that we're trying to determine. In a perfect world, that revenue, whatever revenue adjustments we have, is going to more than make up for whatever adjustments we have to make in operational expenses. However, we don't know that yet. Okay, so what we what we do have right now in front of us is we have an understanding of the revenue that we have in front of us. We have an understanding of the expenditures that we have in front of us. I'm not asking you to make full-time commit to cuts, what I'm asking for is a clearly delineated approach of if this, then that, if this, then that, like we've done in almost every other year up until now. And that's fair I, enough. And but I'm not what, saying that we're going to implement it, but I'm asking for the same thing on the municipal side. I'm not asking this from just the school board. What I just heard from Peter was that Tom has a list of unmet needs that we also have here, mm -hmm. and if more revenues come in, Tom, we can probably we can probably add a couple of these to our on, to our list because we have increased revenues. That's what I just heard. We don't have that luxury. I, 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 we go without again. Jody, I fully understand that. I understand the restrictions of the school budget. I get it. I'm not saying that if if revenue come in comes in, it's fully committed to the municipal side of things. It That's sounded not, like that. None of those decisions are being ago. made. None of those I decisions. Didn't, are being made. Didn't we say that, we no. just need to have an understanding <laughs> of where the cuts are going to come from and what they mean. I, I'm going to ask Tom, and I have asked Tom, and I'll continue to ask Tom the same exact questions. So he has to look at it from all the other budgets as well. So I think the important thing, it's that simple. That's the math. Mm -hmm. We are at personnel or professional development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Okay. So, so when it comes, what I'm not comfortable doing, this is not an easy, like we're talking about people's jobs. The, the, these are teachers who literally just worked today are possibly sitting at home watching this and we're talking about their job. So I'm not really comfortable getting more specific. Um, now Thanks internally, to. once we do know the number, and I'm not saying that to like pass the responsibility to the council, but we, 
we have a lot of tough work to do, and there's a very um, strict timeline in which we have to follow if we are in a place where we're having to reduce teaching positions. I understand. Um, and so that's as specific as I can get. You know, it's, it's $75,000 for a teaching position, it's 45000 for an ed tech. We can't just pick and choose what ed techs we have. They're connected to students' individualized needs, and we have to provide those. Um, if we're reducing teaching positions, we're starting to look at seniority. Um, that's what drives that. And then we have to look at certification. That also drives that. Um, and so I, I think that we've done the best that we can under the circumstances that we have in getting us doing our part this year. We are asking for help from the, from the town, from the municipal side, to help us get through this budget year. Um, Next year, Peter, I can do a better job guaranteeing you a net increase of 3%. I could, there's no way I could do that this year unless straight from the gate I came out saying we're reducing 15 positions. And that, um, if, you, if you think about what that means, you know, students are just, I mean, you can do the math yourself. Right. But, but, but I think our challenge as a community, what, what our community has heard and what we've committed to is we will deliver a 3% budget. Tax rate increase. 3% less tax, tax rate, rate increase. increase. Right. So that, I think that's really different than a net. It is. A net school tax budget. Rate. Like 100%. I mean, those are, to me, 100%. those aren't, I never yeah. heard that. And so right. if that was said, I've never heard that as a, as a goal. And, and, and I'm not I'm not suggesting that operational mm -hmm. budgets have to come in below 3%. I'm not saying that in any stretch, because you've already done that. You've clearly met that. If that were the goal, mm -hmm. then you've met that very admirably. But we do have a tax rate to deal with. So, um, you know, I, I think we're probably looking at similar staff reductions on the municipal side, I would assume. I mean, everything that I've heard from Tom so far is he's in the same exact, you guys both get up at the podium and said, this is our best guess at, a, our best approach at the budget as it stands right now. I believe you both. I, I don't disagree with any of those things. If it does, the community has to decide if they're willing to lose a couple staff positions on the municipal side and a couple of staff positions on the school side in order to make that magic number. If that's the will of the voters, that's the will of the voters. Uh, I, but we have got still have a lot of pieces in play right now. Nothing set in stone. We're not deciding the budget right here tonight. So you ask for direction from the council. I might suggest tomorrow in your, in your meetings you discuss all of your different potential outcomes and options and what that might look like. That, that's happening on Tuesday for us. Did, may I interject? We, we're responsible for educating approximately 3,000 children. That's my priority as a board member. The last time we had to do a significant reduction in staff in this community, it took us 11 years to re 11 years to recover. And we still are not at a point at our high school being able to offer many of the courses uh, that our students would like to have and we'd like to provide for them compared to surrounding communities. This is not going to be easy. It is difficult to reduce staff, number one. But it is difficult to face our children and say we can't provide the education they really should have and to tell elementary teachers okay, you're only going to have 25 or 26, but if you've ever been in an elementary classroom, 25 or 26 children is ominous, number one. And number two, we can't give them an aid unless there are special needs children in that classroom. So we're between a rock and a hard place, and I just want everybody to know that, not just sitting at this table, but living in this community. And Jack, I think we're aware of that. I think I think all we're trying, we're not making any decisions. Tonight. I understand that. All we're trying to say is we made a commitment to our community. Our community has an expectations that we will at least make an effort to at least say this is what the budget looks like at that level. I and then and then exactly as you say, then the community will go to the polls, will have dialogue with us. They can make choices about what they want to do. And so that's all we're asking for tonight is let's at least give the information to 
everybody out there so we can then have a community conversation. That's all that's all we're trying to do. So what is, 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 it, is it fair to say if we're going to share in the reduction requirements, then we're going to share in whatever revenue was generated as well? Is that a fair statement? I don't, uh, not necessarily. I mean, I think, I think I would, I think what we've done, Okay. Well, let me add you, what is your question? I mean, if, I, mean if, I don't understand your question. Okay, my, my question is if we're asking the, if we're asking the school department, one of the scenarios was 100% reduction on the school side. Right. Of, of operating, whatever their operating expenses are to get us to this magic 3% number. Right. Okay. If we come up with better revenue calculations at a later date, Okay. Well, I think the I question, think. I want to make sure we're all crystal clear on this, that we would use that additional revenue to reinstate some of the reductions on the school side, or all of the reductions on the school side. That's a debate we would have when that revenue was, was considered. What you're talking about, which is a conversation the town council has not had, you're talking about potential additional value from the revaluation. I'm, I'm not talking, I'm talking okay. about revenue so in general. Take, so take, Let's talk big picture. Okay, okay, so if you take the reval, like that's a separate conversation. I, I think, I think to answer your question, Chris, the way you asked it, I thought the way you outlined the ask is consistent with the way we've done it last year. What's 100% look like? What does two thirds look like? What does one third look but that, like? That was my, that was my question, Peter. My question was not on what are the rev, what do the operational reductions look like? We know what that is. That's an e Julie just said, that's easy math. Really My question is, if we're in a position, there's a lot of moving pieces around, if we're in a position at a later date where we feel like we're going to realize additional revenue from whatever source it may be, okay, I, I, I'm talking 50,000 feet here, okay? Yeah, I, I, so once we have the laundry list of reductions from municipal and school, when we finally lock in an estimate of what we think those, those increased revenues are gonna be, what I would expect to have happen on a finance committee from, this, from the council side of things is we would evaluate that revenue stream, look at the list of reductions on both sides, and see what could be reinstituted and refunded before we pass the final recommendation for the budget. Does that make sense? Conceptually, yeah. I mean, the, it, we did, we're taking the revaluation out of that mix, so any additional revenues about the reval. I didn't say anything about reval, I just said I, additional said, revenue. But, but well, that's, that's my, but you that's, asked my opinion, that's, the reval is a separate conversation. I think that has another loaded conversation to it. Yeah. But at this so, point, I, I don't expect there's any significant revenue changes at this point yeah. going forward. So uh, I would be shocked if there was and disappointed if you found an initial $750,000 in revenue I would, at this stage. I would be too. I'd be very disappointed. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, all the more reason then to have the discussion on operating expenses where we're going to have to go to two thirds or a half. Right, I think that's where we are. So or at why, least why outline what not, those are and let people decide. Why are we not considering the reevaluation, the commercial reevaluation, and how that's going to offset the tax rate? I mean, that's a. I don't know. I mean, you guys, you guys can wait. We haven't had this conversation. I mean, we started this process, and first of all, what we've always said is the reevaluation is a little different. We always we have got a formula that we have that we estimate what we think the tax assessor is going to come in with assess value. Mm -hmm. When we started this process, Tom, I look to you. We put mm -hmm. on the table saying we're not really sure where we're going to be by June, and when we need to set the numbers on the reevaluation, what those numbers are. Um, I don't know where everybody else is. I think it is a topic for the finance committee to have a conversation about what are we going to do about the reevaluation. So, so, I, so I, I'd see it a little bit differently in the sense that what we agreed to, um, Julie, was what we agreed to as a fi our finance committee was that we would look at it in two evaluative silos. Um, one is what would happen if the reval wasn't um, being done what is the impact, and we would have that conversation, and then we would look at what happens after the reval. No one committed to how it was going to be applied to decision making, so at least I don't recall having that conversation. Um, and I don't recall, I actually recall the manager saying that at some point between now and the second reading, or maybe at the second reading, is that he will come back with the revaluation, the estimated revaluation, and show us what that's going to look, at, uh, look like so that we can understand it. So how it's then used is a different, that's a personal, I think, you know, we have not said how we're going to use it as a group. So I will, just two things that I'm, oh, go ahead, no, go. So two things that I'm thinking about. Let's just talk hypotheticals for a minute. So hypothetically, school department reduces their budget $750,000, we're below that 3% tax rate, 
they go out, the budget passes or not, right? Um, for a whole variety of reasons. We dismantle the school department. We reduce 10 positions. It's literally destructive. Yep. Um, then we know the commercial reval is going to come in. It comes in, potentially our tax rate, if my math is accurate in any sort of sense, could be zero or pretty Less darn one. low, right? Less, Less than one, one if, that, if my math is accurate in any sense. So now we have a dismantled school department. We have a nearly zero or less than 1% tax rate. And we feel good about that? That's just a hypothetical It would actually question. be a reduction in the tax rate. Right. That's, that's, that's a right. hypothetical. That's right. The other aspect I would just ask us to think certainly. about in this context, because you, can, you don't get to pick and choose what information you're going to think about. Right. We're a big, yep. you know, moving, yep. organized system, right? Yep. Everything's interconnected. We are minimum receivers. This is the second year that we've reached minimum receiver status. I understand for all of you that have been here and in these positions, you've seen this coming. And I understand that there have been choices all along the way that got us to the point where we were in FY17, that got us to the point where we were in FY18, right? Knowing that we were going to potentially hit minimum receiver status at some point in time. And, and how we choose, chose to use fund balance or not, how we, what types of budgets we chose to put forward or not leading up to that. Um, but I came in last year at a place where we did use fund balance the year prior. We did put forward a, pre, a, a mostly level services budget with, I think, Peter, you might have even said it was one of the lowest increases that you've seen in the school department in a number of years. So, so the reason why we're here at this minimum receiver status is because our town has a high value. That's why we're here. And in fact, there's we've even talked about in the short time I've been here, the mismatch between the way the state calculates our valuation in terms of state subsidy and the way that our town, the, the amount of revenue that we're actually generating from the valuation. And so we're correcting that now, maybe getting more aligned perhaps with what the state has been saying about Scarborough to get us to minimum receiver status. So I'm confused, I guess, as to why we wouldn't then think about the connection between these two things, the loss in state subsidy and the connection of the valuation of our town. They're, they actually go hand in hand. So the mismatch has been the way the state has calculated our valuation because they compare us to our neighboring communities. It's not necessarily the most, the same accurate that, that happens here in August each year. But that, so, those two things are connected, and we're doing a corrective measure on our side locally to control that and to generate more revenue. But yet, you know what's not changing? The number of students who are gonna show up and need to be educated. And we don't get to pick and choose which ones we educate. And we don't get to pick and choose which ones get what they need. They all have to get what they need. And so, it is, it's, it, is a, it is, it is the local responsibility. It is, but the counter to that, Julie, is the state doesn't get to vote on our tax on our on the school budget. Nope. And the reality of it is, is that we've we've gone through this exercise any number of times over the past seven, eight, nine years with exactly the same approaches, and we've put forward every single time to a T in the last five years I've been here what I consider a reasonable budget, and it's passed once. So we have to look at the reality, and and I'll tell you right now, I, I will make this statement. Right here, right now, if we cut $750,000 out of the school budget and it's 3% and it doesn't pass, I'm not taking another dime out of it, period. I will make that statement right here, right now, and I will repeat it until next November. Because it's irresponsible, in my opinion, to do this. However, to Peter's point, if this is the will of the town, they have to have informed decision making. If they understand, and I, I, I understand the gravity of this discussion, and I understand the impact of cutting 10 positions in the school is going to have. And Jackie, I agree. We haven't recovered yet from the last round that we did no. this. Okay? But that's not up to me to decide. That's up to me to decide when it comes to voting on the, on the, on the department budget. And what we're, I'm stuck with and what I'm forced into is a an agreement by the council that the overall tax rate will not exceed 3%. Regardless if I feel like it should be 3.1 or 3.2 with everything reserved in the school and it should all come out of the municipal side. I, I, that's, that's not a realistic position for us to be in right now. So we've got to look at the different scenarios. None of them are easy. No, certainly on the municipal side, they're not easy either. 
And the, the people have to decide. Are you willing to make these reductions or not? Hmm. And you know, we can we can we can make those initial decisions up front. Uh, and if we're right, it'll pass. If we're wrong, it won't. And we'll keep the process going like we always do. But people don't get to decide on the town. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we know this, but this is what I hear this all the time. I'm, I'm, I, I'm actually okay with the education budget, and I don't like the town budget. I, th this is the only thing I can vote on, though. Then you have a PR problem, don't you? Yes. You do. I'm sorry, Hillary. That's the reality of the situation. We're sitting here to try and resolve that very problem of people don't talk about the municipal side. That's what brought us all together to begin with. That's why we started having joint finance committee meetings, because before all this happened, it was very much, here's your number. Like it or lump it. That's it. Deal with it. So this is progress. It's messy. It's cumbersome. It's not where we all want to be, but we're getting there. Or we're not. I, I mean, I've got a question with this. If we're two-thirds of the budget, roughly, mm -hmm. on the school side, mm -hmm. but we are one-third of the revenue, mm -hmm. something is truly out of balance in how we are funded, and we are asking for help with this, I'm, I'm really struggling to understand how it is equitable when you increased your revenue by $1.4 million and we lost a million to ask us to come up with either all of it, two-thirds of it, or even 50% of it. Mm -hmm. We're stuck in a corner. Mm -hmm. Why this is year. there this year? Mm -hmm. Why can we not have a leeway this year being granted to us so that we don't dismantle these schools? Without the schools, we have issues of people wanting to move in. People come for the education. Right. They come for the amazingness that is Scarborough. Yeah. To take that us all apart, I, I'm not. I'm not understanding why that's okay, Chris. You know, I can but, explain that. That's right. But you know, I think the problem is we're not making the decision at the end of the day. The the community is making the decision at the end of the day of how much they want to spend in community support for all the services that are being delivered <coughs> by all of us. Period. I mean, you don't need to convince us. What you need to do is tell a compelling story to our community on why they should come out and support the budget, whatever that number ends up being. Mm -hmm. You heard Chris say, we're not sitting here today saying there's any formula. What we want to know are what are the possibilities of things that we can do that we will put in front of. And we're going to have some questions for the municipal budget. I have some questions for the municipal budget. We've, we've created a list. We're working on that. Next week, May 10th, we'll come up with our recommendations. We're not saying who is subsidizing what. We're saying what are the items we can do to inform the community and let the community make decisions. But I think what we're saying and hearing is, I don't know, 8 out of 12 times, we haven't passed a budget over 3%. That's what we were told. So, you know, if, if we want the community to fund more, then we need to convince them that it's, it's, it's in their interest to do so. But we can't tell them what to vote for. They're going to vote the way they're going to vote. So our that, obligation is we need to deliver. I think our goal is we don't, this community is in a really tough spot. We all know that. You know, last year, no sooner had we finished the budget process than we're almost starting it back up again. Okay. I mean, our goal would be we need to move through this budget, get something in place, and talk about as a community how do we move forward. So uh, the energy around this table trying to argue about who all we're trying to say is, how do we, as a group, find out what does a 3% budget look like based on our best decisions about what we would recommend? That is what's going to go to the voters. Totally understand that, but I guess my question really comes down to, how do we get more of the pie that is on the table? Because what we're not getting is that revenue generation to help us maintain the school. How do we get a piece of that so that we're able to maintain. But, but, but you are. The problem is one town, one budget. What you see in front of us is all of our revenue and all of our expenses into a pot. So if you're, if you're going to get more of the revenue pie, that means on the municipal, municipal side, we have to take, you know, we get less revenue, so we have, you know, we'll have to do the reductions. All we're trying to say is what's the best way this community can look at the resources we're spending and make the best decisions about where do we redeploy resources to come in where we are. 
I mean, it, virtually at, at the taxpayers paying for, you know, whatever we don't get from revenue sources like ex excess tax and everything, it's coming from the taxpayers. I understand. And so. The flaw in all of this, however, Peter, is, in my opinion, doesn't matter which, what budget we send to the voters. Because if we, heaven forbid, have to reduce positions, to get to the number that is acceptable by the town council, because it's the town council that sets the bottom line that goes to the voters. If the voters say no to the budget, we don't know if it's because it's too high or it's too low, whether they're supporting the reduction of programs and staff, we don't know that. And that is the flaw. In, in everything, and you can't fix that, the council can't fix that, I can't fix that. Mm -hmm. But, but <coughs> this argument we're having tonight, yeah. the problem is we have the construct that we have. We do. And, and all, what our jobs collectively, all of us around this table, is to manage that construct. How do we put something in front of the voters that I, we think they're gonna support? And we need to make those decisions collectively. I, so, I, I, so, yeah. So here's a here, sorry, Tom. Here, here's another scenario. Let's 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 explore this one. We don't change a thing in the school budget or the municipal budget, and we put it out there, and it fails. Are you willing to roll those dice and say then it's going to be a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar reduction if the budget fails on the first round to get it down to three to get the tax rate to what it's going to be? Do you want to roll those dice? Because at that point, it's only the school that's on the table for discussion. Well, I, I think that's Peter that mentioned. In the past. Peter mentioned sure several is. times that it's these are the choices. But what is the decision making timeline? So we're having this meeting today. Mm -hmm. There's a public hearing tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then you guys have a finance meeting on the 10th. Mm -hmm. There's not. There's no other way for the public to weigh in other than tomorrow. But yet, are we giving them a menu to choose from? Like, how are, I guess I don't understand how they're having choice because if at the end of the day the reductions become all the school's responsibility, we reduce 10 positions, right. um, we put the budget out there, there's no guarantee that it passes them. I mean, how That's many right. times yeah. has it failed on the first referendum when it right. was at or under right. 3%? Right. That, I don't have that. Three out of the last target. four years. That's right. right. So, That's I mean, right. I don't think right. that we can say. That guarantees that the budget passes. I agree, I agree. But what, what I can say, what I can say is that I won't vote for any further reductions in the school budget if it comes through ten times, and we have to revote ten times until that gets through. I don't think that's responsible. I don't think cutting seven hundred fifty thousand dollars is responsible out of the school budget. I'm trying to find that middle ground, where the, you know it's it's a shared. It, I I believe in the two thirds, one thirds. I think that approach worked last year, um, but I'm also of the opinion that if Again, you know, we're, we're trying to, to, to your point, Julie, we're trying to discern the will of the voters sitting at this table. Right. The only thing that's going to discern the will of the voters is the vote. And even so, then, you don't have feedback. It, and even then, there's no feedback. Oh. So, you know, I mean, we could go the other direction and say, yeah, it's a 4.19% budget. Let's see where it goes on the school side. If it passes, then the people have spoken. If it doesn't, I guess I'm, I'm confused. I, it sounds like you're kind of feeling around through the, in the dark trying to figure out what is the will of the voters, what will pass. Well, all I know is the council no set idea. the goal of right. no, no more oh. than 3% on That's the tax right. rate. That's right. Yes. And, and if that, that is your goal, I, I think you do need to consider the impact of the revaluation. I just want to be clear how I characterized that at the presentation. I did not include that. Right. That's a process that's underway. Uh, I, I won't have final information, but I fully intend to update the finance committee before your May 10 meeting, mm -hmm. with some estimates of what that will what that will look like, mm -hmm. and it undoubtedly will have a significant impact. Yep, and and that's why I'm comfortable saying, see what 750 thousand looks like, see what 50 percent of that looks like, and and then if we if if the revaluation still hits us and we have to get we have to get the three percent somehow. We as well, I shouldn't say that. We're under the assumption right now that we have to get to 3%. We feel like that that's our goal and our requirement, and we exceeded that goal last year, uh, or we, 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 well, we didn't we, meet that goal last year. But we, we went to, right, because we got a surprise. You thought you did. Well, we thought we did. We thought we did. We a surprise but, but, in the valuation. Right. So just for clarity, so. are you performing this same exercise on the town side? 
if you took sitting right there. Seth. Yes. No, but you're not asking him. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. Yeah. This is the fourth start, meeting. So yeah. my oh, staff okay. has been Sorry, before. Okay. So you're doing, if you had to take it all from the town side, $750,000? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that. Yes, that. Okay, thank you. So tomorrow, our expectation is that the superintendent and, and the business manager and our finance committee will have for us a list of what it will take to reduce 750 and what it will take to reduce uh, 375. Ten positions, 750 is ten positions, 375 is five positions, 500,000 is six teachers, one ed tech. That's but, but couldn't there be other things? I mean, you've got a tech reval, you know, refresh it. That's, no, we don't. No. I thought it was 200,000 operation, I thought, that is in there. No, we're not doing that. Well, we're not yeah, doing and we have to be. We have You're to not tread. a full tech. There's, 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 we have to tread very lightly there. No, I know, but I'm just saying there's, there's other possibilities, yeah. just like we're going to be looking at other yeah, line items. We, we can control those line items. I'm just saying that is. But here's the other thing. Once the budget is voted, that's the budget we have to work with. You can't change it. And it doesn't matter right, right. what comes in after that. Correct. We can't use it. Well, you can. It goes into the pot for next year. But let's be clear. I, okay. I want to make sure everyone understands the impact of the uh, of higher valuation is not revenue to us. It, it lowers the tax rate. Right. Yeah. We don't see one dollar more. It's That's not correct. a revenue conversation. That's correct. It affects the tax rate and only the tax rate. And when does that come into When does when, it? When is that being done? Yeah. What's the time frame for that? It's going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. Do you know when it's going to be finished? When, when After the, the election. Information? After the vote. But, but I will be in a position, and I will be appropriately conservative, to give uh, an update to the Finance Committee on May 10th, and certainly to the Town Council on May 16th at second reading, what I believe a conservative estimate of that impact will be. It, it, it doesn't provide revenue. What it does is it lends to the argument about the, what the actual increase is. Whether it's three percent, it's just, it's a, you know, you are in a no, way trying to, yeah, yeah you are, that's right. It's not giving us any extra money, no. it's just... It's getting us to our three percent goal. Amount, it's reducing the tax. And, and personally, I, I think the tax. superintendent has already given us a clear indication of what yep. um, the cuts would be. Um, I don't think we need details outside of that. I do need to understand, you know, on a fair balance argument, um, what would happen on the town side. Um, you know, what would those adjustments look like if we did it, um, and what and what those offsets are, just just for discussion purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I you know. I think we've known this for, I know for at least four years, we've known this clip was coming. Right. And, we, and, and as part of that clip, we also, I think, at least I did, knew that we would have to have a, um, an absorption of some of this fall um, as a result of the state not giving us our fair share. So this is the year that we have to absorb some of it, and I'm comfortable with that. It could be a lot worse. What do you mean by absorb? It's a million dollars. I don't see a problem with their budget. How would you get to 3%? Yeah. I'm comfortable in changing my mind about the 3% based okay. on the circumstances. Yes, yeah, fair enough. Uh, and I could go that route too. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the best, I, I, I understand giving the voters options and saying 10 positions, 6 positions. I guess what is the best um, vehicle for the community when they hear six teachers and one ed tech, what's the best vehicle for them to say, that's not okay, we would rather have a higher tax rate? Coming out of voting. Emailing? <laughs> yeah, well, but that point, coming, at that vote. point it's too well, late, because we've already taken them out of the voting, voting, But if the yeah. budget goes down, mm -hmm. because yeah. they're saying we're, it's not, we're well, not okay with those six, six teachers, two years ago? it did, but then that we had the Goldilocks. We could do the Goldilocks. Well, and that's what I'm worried about the timeline. You know, that if tomorrow's the public hearing, Hopefully, everybody's home watching right now and hearing our conversation. And they come out tomorrow night to the public hearing and express their concern about what further reductions on the school department mean. That has been expressed from, I only went to four out of five of the budget outreach meetings, but I heard that at four out of five, and my understanding is that the one I was not able to attend at Hillcrest, that was also expressed. That, you know, the school budget is not there's nothing excessive about this budget. And I'm not okay. saying that there's anything excessive about the town budget, but we know that this is the year where we need help. 
we're, we're asking for help from the town side to get us through this year. If we reduce, if we reduce five, six, ten positions on the school side, and next year the expectation is the same, if I'm hearing Peter, that we come in with a net three percent budget, we're not adding a single position back to the budget. We're lucky to hold line with level mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. next year. That's right. And then that story continues out, so there's no there's no chance for us to even make incremental investments. And so I believe, if I'm understanding the history of the school department budget going back to 2009, <coughs> that's about as far as I've gone back deeply, um, we've done this to ourselves time and time again, where we've dug deep holes and then we work to try to fill the holes. And then we dig deep holes and we work to try to fill the holes. We did it with our teacher's contract, we did it with buses a number of years ago. Um, and so I just worry that we're setting ourselves up for this like cyclical, cyclical grind instead of saying, you know, what is the current reality? I'm all for goals. I set goals all the time. But like I said to Kate, I used this analogy. If, if your goal is to run a marathon, and you train your butt off to run a marathon, and then you break your leg a week before the marathon, you're not going to run the marathon. you got to set a new goal. doesn't mean you'll never run the marathon. doesn't mean you'll never get back at it. But you have to assess the current reality. And right now, our, if there was something in this budget, if you could point me to a direction, you although can. I know you can't, um, but perhaps offline, if somebody had an idea, I'm not opposed to hearing <coughs> ideas. I'm not going to pretend that Kate and I and the leadership council can see everything, every angle of this. But we had we met with a community member who had a whole list of ideas, over a million dollars of ideas. And you know what we did? We sat down, I think we spent two and a half hours At with least. that community member, and we went through line by line, and we listened, and we talked about the pros and the cons of each of those decisions. So it's not, this is not us being resistant. This is not us not wanting to do our part. Um, you know, I know you don't know me very well, but last year I feel like we tried really, really hard to do our part, and we're doing the same this year by coming in where we came in. Um, I, I feel a little bit like I'm begging here, and maybe <laughs> I don't know if I should or shouldn't be, but. So I guess I'd flip that on you too and say, then how would you suggest we get to 3%? You su are you suggesting that it should all come out of the municipal side if we're going to maintain our 3% target of 3% tax increase? So it should only come out of the municipal at this point? I, I may have. Um, been overly optimistic or perhaps heard something wrong along the way, but I thought that the commercial reeval was a huge part of the conversation this year, and the timing of that was actually critical because of the challenges we knew we were facing. Mm -hmm. That was my, not the, the sole reason why, obviously there's other reasons why we're looking at this and that we've been undervaluing those properties, but the timing, I think, is critical, and it's an asset to the challenge that we're, this massive challenge that we're facing. So I think that um, before we m make decisions that are going to have a long-term negative impact, how can we both meet our goals, take advantage of the reeval, and still, you know, maintain basic programming services within this? I, I don't know if it helps the discussion, uh, but I can say confidently, without the benefit of you know spending more time to be very accurate. But if you do nothing, let's let's say you even add in this forty-seven thousand dollars additional for the school mm -hmm. the impact of the reveal will get you well within your goal and that that's alone. right that's but that, right. that but that and that's the that's to Peter's point before though is I'm looking at where a snapshot right now of where we're at and I'm just looking for a contingency plan yeah I want to know what happens if, if that reevaluate if we're conservative or we're that when we run those numbers through and they're not what we expect them to be or they're without a range we got to have a fallback plan I'm not saying we execute it. Right. I, 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 I am, I'll be very clear. I'm vehemently opposed to taking seven hundred fifty thousand dollars out of the school budget. I'm not gonna. I, I can't support that. But it's one option we have to evaluate and look at in order to meet our goal of three percent, where we're at right now. So we're not asking to implement those cuts until we have the full picture and we make our recommendations to the full council. That's part of the discussion. I'm just. I'll do what I'm directed to do, but I'm saying it's easy to make that request, but if you're asking me to come up with $750,000 in cuts, there's going to be some very distasteful things on that list. Mm -hmm. um, there were last year, too. I, I get it. Well, I thought one of the lessons that I learned last year is if we can keep the emotion out of this, and uh, all the better. 
I think the more information you can give the community about the choices that they're facing right now is important. But they yes. don't really have choices because they all they get to do is say yes to the bottom line or no to the bottom to the school budget bottom line. That's the only choice they have is yes or no to the school unless, budget. Unless we take reductions, if we are if we go ahead of our or exercise our authority, take money out of the, the municipal side and put it into the school side. Yeah, but we ran into that problem I don't know, two years ago where we did do that two thirds, one third, I can't remember what year it was. Last year. And we, we took criticism because we took out of the, and I understand. because there's a portion of this community that yeah. says, no, it needs to come out of the school right. budget. But guys, you can't no have it both we ways. Do, we're going to get criticism. Right. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, we want to cut the, 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 the school budget alone and the municipal side gets untouched because that's what we vote on. That, that's not that's that's I not guess. an equity pr pr a proposition. It's not an equitable proposition. So, so, so I think it seemed to me, Chris, when it, you know, as we were kind of, I think your request was reasonable. At least put on the table mm -hmm. the contingency plan, however right. you described it, of a hundred percent. Would you say two thirds, fifty percent, or mm -hmm. where'd you, where'd you end up? That so, was arbitrary on my part. So yeah, whatever they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Then I already upset somebody. <laughs> 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 and we can look at that. Go ahead, go to bed. You can go to sleep. So I think you, the, began the conversation was an ask. I think that's the ask. That's a direction. That doesn't mean we're going to do. But we need to have that information. I think that's all we're saying. Yeah, and it sounds like we have it. I, I think we already well, have it. From yes. Side. Well, and and what do you want from me? Let's take, let's be clear. I, I would say this. I would have the same ask of of what a full reduction looks like on the municipal side. What. A third looks like from the municipal side, and what half looks like from the municipal side. A third reduction. Right. So there's and three options: full on one side or the other, a third, two thirds, one thirds, which is what we did last year, or split it down the middle, fifty-fifty. I'm not advocating for on any of those positions, right. by the way. I just want to be clear about that. I just want to be able to evaluate those three and say, what are our choices? How are we going to present? How we're going to make this decision? And then we're going to have to argue about what's unpalatable and what, what is acceptable and what's not. It's, it's not a great position to be in by any stretch of the imagination, but if we're going to hold it, ourselves... It doesn't mean we're going to approve it either. Exactly. That's my point. We've got to at least have that on the table to have that basis of that discussion, though. That's how I look at it. But if, if the will of the rest of the committee isn't to do that and we want to do something else, I'm fine with that, too. And present this at your May 10 meeting? Is that... That's our last one. Right? Isn't the May, the May 10th meeting is just our recommendations for... It's an open last one. It's our last one. Yeah, it's, our last it's decision day. That's why it's I was day. concerned about the timeline. It doesn't yep. feel like there's a lot of opportunity for community input because we have... Tomorrow night's the public hearing. Well, I hate to say it, but the reality of the situation is is community doesn't have input in the decision that we make other than what we hear from them. They're not voting. It's up to us to make that decision and that determination what we recommend. So everybody's heard it out in public now. Uh, I'm sure, you know, phones are going to start ringing off the hook and emails will start flowing because they always yes, do. Yes, I'm sure yeah. watching at home. Exactly. Sure. It's a normal, normal yeah. go of things. I, I just want to emphasize, I think, <coughs> what Julie has mentioned that we all need to keep in mind that goals are, um, are exactly that. They're goals. They're not mandates. They're not absolutes. And given certain circumstances, sometimes you have to change that goal, understanding the constraints that you're operating under. And, you know, this is just, for me, it's one of those situations I'd love to be below 3%. The reality is, based on the budgets that we're seeing, it's, it's not laudable. In my, in my mind, it is not laudable on the school side, because I'm not going to sit there and decimate the school system for one year, only to rebalance next year, and then start rebuilding it. That, that's fruitless kind of exercise. Um, so, you know, I, I think that we need to be mindful of that. And, and it's always been about what is the long-term impact of the tax rate that we're looking at. There's going to be a couple of years that we get nailed. This might be one of them. It's, hopefully it's the last one. But we also had, what, two <coughs> years here at 2.3% one year, 2.5%, 2.75. Last year was the big one. And then this year it's going to be, you know, somewhere is, I think, less than two when you take a look at the overall impact of the rebound. So... In which case this discussion is moot and the, the budget's been set and we're all good to go. And I'm perfectly content with that. You want to know that? I am. No, <laughs> seriously. If, no, this is the budget that was never had. content. If I'm, listen, I think both sides did an, an excellent job with the budget. I do, and I'd support this budget on a, standing on its own principles right now as it stands. But we've got, unfortunately, we we've, we've got this this goal out on the table that needs to be addressed right. and it needs to be discussed. 
But, but again, I'm confident if, the, if you're concerned with that goal, we will comfortably be below that if you do nothing further. So is this an exercise in futility? What purpose does it serve? I don't know what that number is. It, it provides an understanding. Yes, it does. So it that puts when it I go out into the public and advocate for the budget, I can at least tell them that if we do this, here are the services that we could lose. Right. And, and I think the other piece that needs Trash pickup. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever it might be. And the other piece that needs to be thought about is on the website, the reval, it talks about it's it's not supposed to support additional expenditures of the town. It is to just reallocate what you pay for. Right. And That's so good. some, uh, mm -hmm. we may be in a different place, but at the end of the day, I keep coming back, we have to tell a compelling story to our community. There's, there is a part of the community that says their expectation was before the reval, this this budget needs to be at three percent. That's so their expectation, and, and we can try to educate them. We can try to, we can tell them they're wrong. Come on, Peter. I had an expectation before this process started that this would be an amicable process and everybody would love it, coming out of the gate. That's just not realistic. I'm sorry. No, no but I'm, just, I'm saying the reality is people need to show people. We need to get people at the polls that are going to vote for whatever we end up doing, or we're going to be doing this several times. So it's just. It, that's a filter we need oh, to can we, can we agree that no matter what we do, there's right. going to be a portion of a constituency that's not going to be happy? Oh, yeah. But whether I mean, it's the conservatives that want less century or whether it's the pro-advocate schools who want more spending within education, no matter where we are, there's going to be a constituency. Oh, that absolutely. But so we that's want part to be of being uh, an elected official and making the hard decisions. Absolutely. Well, at the end of the day, what we need to get to is we need to have a majority at the polls. Right. So, yeah, so there's going to be those agree, that are on the losing can, side. Can, can, can we just agree that's a conversation we can have in finance when it comes absolutely. to how we're going to address the valuation? Yeah, absolutely. That's, where it, needs, that's where that's it needs right. to be. And then it needs to go to a council as a recommendation right. and we'll go from there. Right. This, this goal of first vote, of course I would like that, but I'd rather go to the vote voters five times than right. to do something that I know professionally is absolutely. disastrous. Right. And right. I'm going to stand behind that. Yep. I'll present options in front of you, but that they won't come with my recommendation. Uh, that's very clear, and I, I would hope they wouldn't, to be honest with you. Yeah. Both of you. Right. Well, I shouldn't say no. I think that I do have a list of things I, I have been prepared to bring forward, and a, a host of other ones that I don't think will be come with my stamp of approval. I understood. I, 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 know, so I hope they wouldn't. <laughs> <coughs> when you're talking about the 750, <coughs> two-thirds, one-third, 50 percent, is it just in the operating, or do you, is it, it can we look at capital or whatever? I'm, I'm happy with whatever you, I, I mean, honestly, I, at this point, I'm, I don't want to overcomplicate the process. Um, if it's, because again, to Tom's point, I, I, don't, I don't want this exercise to be so burdensome that it's not going to, uh, for, for nothing. Um, I, I'm happy sticking to operational expenses for now. Well, I think it because needs to be, because it, because capital doesn't have an operational expense in the budget, so. But it has no, tax rate. Can, we can shift things out of capital, out of operational into capital, out of capital into oh, operational. Yeah. We can do the back and forth thing. So I, I personally would say just keep it on operational. I think that's the yeah, easiest thing. Um, mm -hmm. If we get to a point where we have to make those decisions because we don't like the valuation, maybe we explore that. Oh, also, there was one year where there were, uh, and I don't remember what year it was. So it, they had they a, all blurred together. It was a, like budgets and they said this is like scenario one scenario two and uh, they said if whatever happened happens can we as I think it was the school department might have been some town that said can we come back after the budget's been approved and maybe right. make some budget amendments so those are options that the council has not to make not on the municipal amendments. side yes not on the school, not side. On the school side oh not because Scott, that was before the vote yeah. that's right thanks yeah. sorry you yeah. have to go back to right. the voters to right the best thing that we could do is if we had surplus we could put it to fund balance for use the following year that's it no, I think Ruth is correct. It wasn't too long ago when the state hadn't passed the budget. Yes, that was a one-time exception. That was a one-time exception. Right. That, right. that, oh, but the right. town yeah. council would have had to vote right. how to right. use that money it if it too. came. Was it last year? <coughs> I thought they had a budget. Just to clarify something, yeah. you said that the, um, the reval wasn't supposed to be used to fund excess spending. New spending. New, New spending. spending. Yeah. Right. So I just wanted to, I don't feel like that would be the case in budgets, right? Because these are, these are the, you know, like, like we don't have, we don't have anything to get rid of. So it's not like new or excess spending. It's not like the re is going to come in and we're going to be like, oh, let's get that. Right, exactly. It's not like the re is going to come in and we're going to go, oh, let's add a million dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so well, I mean, I mean, all I'm trying to do is, no, no, all I'm trying to do is, 
personnel. All I'm trying to say is I'm not necessarily articulating my view. I'm just saying everything we do has to be done with a filter about how is our community going to react to what we're doing. I've heard those comments from the community. So that's how they're going to think. We, we can think it's wrong, but that's how they're going to think. So all I'm saying is as we go forward down this pathway, that's what we have to think about. We either have to tell a compelling story so that they will show up and vote yes, or we don't. I mean, we can argue all we want that they may be wrong or we don't agree with them, but that's how some of them are thinking. So that's our challenge. And I think after this, what we haven't talked about is, you know, we need to have a whole communication piece at some point. We talk about how do we go out between when we arrive at the numbers and when we go to the polls, but that's a conversation for another day. It's assuming we agree on the budget that goes out. <laughs> well, yeah, who knows. Um, does anybody, I think, have we kind of exhausted this conversation? Yeah, the horse has been dead for a little bit. It's yeah. been to debt, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody, anybody else got anything? We're making footballs out of it right yeah. now. <laughs> so the last thing on the agenda item is just to have public comment. Does anybody, anybody want to come up and join us? Anybody? There's a mic. Is there a mic over there? No, I can leave loud enough. Use your outside voice, Ben. Yeah. I will. <laughs> Benjamin Howard for Oakdale Drive. Um, tonight, just listening to you guys, it was uh, fairly disappointing. A, a little bit uh, different than the mantra of last year, where it was more of an open discussion. Tonight, it seemed like most people were defending their own budget instead um, of moving things forward. I know it's tough. I've looked through the budget and a lot of the line items that I have marked as potential places that we could cut money in the future based off of previous budgets did get cut and got cut pretty considerably. Uh, so what I started off with today, just to take a different perspective on the budget, is sort of look at the major line items that exist in the school budget. Uh, I had only focused on the school today because I had planned to only at the attend the town council meeting tomorrow, but. Uh, besides the point, uh, so the overall line items such as uh, instructional budget, uh, the special education program, the co-curricular, and I totaled all those up over the year and sort of looked at percentage-wise and saw where they fit in the budget. Um, you know, I just wanted to see if any particular part got bigger or smaller over the years. Um, some good news is is that um, our transportation uh, went from. Um, our transportation went from being 4% of the budget down to 3% of the budget, which suggests that we've done a lot of good investing into energy saving stuff, which I really like that, um, as well as our facilities dropped from 10% of the budget down to 8% of the budget. But that being said, there are portions of the budget that did increase. It wasn't in the instructional, it wasn't in the special education, in fact it was in the extracurricular activities. Um, extracurricular activities increased from 1.8% of the budget up to 2.6% of the budget. Guidance increased from 2% of the budget up to um, just under 3%. So these were the areas in particular that I looked at for potential places to find some money. And I had questions and I'm more than willing to sit down and go line by line item for them. Um, in the extracurricular department, um, one area that I was really questioning was the high school equipment. Uh, last year we didn't even spend the money that we allocated for it, and this year we're asking for a 43% increase in that particular line item. Uh, that was just something I didn't understand. Um, in 2016, our contracted transportation for the extracurricular activities was $12,000, and in 2018 we're looking at $90,000. Again, another line item that I was just surprise that jumped up so much and again I would like explanation for. Um, there will, I don't really want to go into this line by line, it'll be here all night, but I was hoping that this would be sort of the discussion that you each had, was you looked at each other's budget and questioned what it was. I know you guys have been sitting and looking at these numbers for hours and hours. I remember when I looked at my numbers for hours and hours, I couldn't find the answer and someone will walk up and go, wow, what's that number? And you go back and you recalculate and you're like, oh, I, I found something. I was really hoping that's where, where the discussion would be tonight. Um, I wish I got to speak first and, and sort of spark this sort of question, but um, hopefully, again, I'm willing to sit down and spend all night and go line by line with you and ask questions 
and get the answers, and then we can try to work on a piece to present it to the town. Um, what I feel like happened here tonight was a lot of just hypotheticals, and I, I don't know if it really moved us forward, but uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. Larry Hartwell, 9 Fury Drive. Are these, uh, is this meeting being recorded this week, or is it like one last week? Just to be clear, it was recorded. We're having issues with the audio, but it was certainly recorded, Mr. Hartwell. Okay. Well, I saw several others on the website, but not that. And we've had some other issues in the past with video. Anyway, um, on the school side, I uh, just got a couple comments about the, the school side, and most of the rest of the comments are directed at the town council. Um, I think it's it's. It's scare tactics to say, oh, we'll cut 10 or 12 positions. We're dismantling the school system. Those are inflammatory phrases, but in a population of 300 plus uh, faculty members, maybe three positions or four positions in that group might be possible. Um, and I also understand your frustration and your questions on the budget versus the increase in expenses, expenses versus the increase in the mill rate. Unless you live in this world of looking at that, it's it's complicated and confusing. You can have your expenses go up 5% and the mill rate go up 3% and vice versa. So it's, it's, uh, it's not easy to deal with. I certainly understand you'll all ask some good questions here. Now getting to our friends on the town side. Uh, in Tom's Budget transmitted. He said the combined town and school budget net budget requires an additional three million three hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars, five point three percent increase in expenses to be raised through property taxes. Period. Using the town council's policy to predict a range of valuations increase for the year, the estimated tax rate is blah blah blah. Though not considered in this analysis, we expect the commercial and industrial revaluation to add. The town council passed, and it's dated October 19th of 2016, a policy and a methodology on how to compute the valuation. Um, Mr. Casio has said, has said on many occasions, facts matter, let's agree on what we're going to use for terms and so forth. I agree, and, I, and this tells us how we compute this. The number's been computed and what the valuation is that we use to calculate our, our tax increase of 4.3%. It doesn't say anything about going out there and, and grabbing uh, uh, numbers on what the valuation, revaluation of commercial will be. Um, and the, the council voted unanimously for a 3% increase in the mill rate this year. Two members of the board voted not to pass, or not to pass the first reading. Two other board members said, I won't vote in the second round if it's over 3%. So that all sounds good, because I, like everyone at this table, don't want to go through last year or anything that looked like that. Like one and done. I think that's one thing we could at least all agree on. At last week's finance committee, I said, broach this subject, and Mr. Donovan said, he just uh, got rather excited about it and going to use the, the valuations, the commercial valuations, even though they're not there, they're not real. And I'm just saying, when you voted for 3%, you voted for a, a way to calculate it. That's what is expected that you do. And at the first reading, you had the chance to put the budget back to our two administrators at that time and say, okay, we'd like to see what it would look like at 3%. That was on April 12th. So here we are tonight, it's May 1st, and now we're, we're turning to the school and say, oh, well, why, why don't you come back with some other numbers for us? So we've lost three weeks or so. And they're the best people to make the decision, not the Finance Committee. But again, we lost three weeks. Um, 
on this, and that's unfortunate. Uh, we've had years that we call correction years this year. We've had the fund balance at Cliff. The year before that, we had the winter. So every year is a one-off situation. I would just, and I was hoping that uh, Chairman Donovan was going to say yes, Larry. We're going with the 3% as our policy says. That's what we're going for. And we're going to make the, make the adjustments, in which case it's one and done. Thank you. Could I just clarify one thing? I believe the policy Mr. Hartwell refers to uh, does consider uh, revaluations and kind of all bets are off or recognizes that that formula may not work exactly uh, perfectly well in that sort of unique scenario. So uh, it is a council policy, but I think this was anticipated and is considered as part of it. Well, in that case, we don't have to reduce the budget by a dollar. We can just say, oh, we're coming in at 2% or less than 2%. Pat ourselves on the back. Oh, is this a debate or is this public day. comment? I'm sorry. Can we have some kind of decorum? Is there any other? Sean, you want to? Uh, well, I, I just wanted to address um, Mr. Howard actually, um, actually provided, I think, a very good reminder about the process and the challenges that we have as a board. Um, and what I mean by that is we both have challenges. The town council is prohibited <coughs> from having line item discussion <coughs> around the school board. We are, and this is by charter and by state law, even if we wanted to, we really shouldn't. And the reason is that we are not to be biased in the application of those resources. That's what the school board's responsibilities are. So that's why we have always stayed away from those line items, even though we try to understand what goes into it. So, you know, I, I think that the conversation that we've had um, kind of takes into consideration, you know, it's, you know, yeah, we did it. We did the analysis to, you know, uh, full-time employees or, teaching staff but I think we can all kind of understand what the impact is and be balanced up you know be balanced in our kind of rhetoric or our advocacy even um, but I, I just want citizens to know we cannot do that it's, pro it's prohibited mm -hmm. it's prohibited so and in our process we're prepared after tonight and hearing public comment tomorrow at the hearing to then next week go through and kind of do the inverse of the priority list if you will um, so I didn't intend to oversimplify the process, but we do believe that already reducing our line items by over $600,000, that we've done that deep scrutinization leading up to the first reading. So with that, anything else? I think only two announcements. One, the finance, the town council finance committee meeting is going to meet May 10th to go over our final recommendations. And then just as a, two quick, we had a regular town council meeting finance for May 15th, which only a couple days later. Do you guys want to keep that, or have you had enough meetings for a period of time? I've had way too many meetings, <laughs> unless it's a joint meeting. I love hanging out with you guys. I say we do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll take that. You okay, can't say it. So I'm fine. The 15th was a joint meeting. Oh, is it? Yeah. Right. Is that? Yeah. There's the calendar. Not the one that was before the schedule. <laughs> And I'll be there if you have to have it. Yeah, let's, hey, let's just leave it on the table for now. We yeah, can come back yeah, to we'll it. Come we have to. Yeah. So move to adjourn. So move. Just, I want to be clear. Operational only uh, is is my charge. That's my suggestion. Yeah, unless other people disagree. Yeah. So you don't want to see capital suggestions or any revenue enhancements. You want it all from the operations <coughs> expense. I think that's right. the request we had of the school board. I think that's the same request. Unless. Okay. I mean, that's how I envisioned it, unless somebody else has another idea. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. You okay? I have a cold. Although, I definitely I don't have the sunburn anymore. My, my, my